This next one I know we are all guilty of. It is something that I really had to break out of my shopping habits and it's somewhere that I, oh, I used to spend a lot of money doing this. Hey guys, it's Jess, and today we are talking about five style mistakes that you're probably making. So I'm gonna get you thinking about what's in your closet, we're gonna learn how to declutter, we're gonna learn how to make the most out of your wardrobe, and then my personal favorite, how to save money. So if all that sounds good, make sure to keep on watching, and if you guys enjoy this video and you wanna see more like it, hit that subscribe button down below to join the family. And with that, let's hop right on in. The first style mistake that you are probably making is buying into every single trend and buying everything in that trend. If you only buy trends, eventually when that trend passes or you maybe just grow tired of that trend, you're gonna end up with a closet full of nothing. Trends, especially when they are more statement based, they're very hard to pair with other things. They're less versatile when it comes to mixing and matching, and you grow tired of them much quicker than more classic or traditional pieces. Now, I'm not telling you not to buy trends because I love a good trend as much as the next person, but I am telling you to be conscious of how much of a trend you're buying and what kind of pieces you're buying that trend in. So for example, let's use cheetah print. So cheetah print has actually been a trend for probably about like a year, a year and a half now, quite a while. When you're buying a piece, when you're buying a trend, consider how wearable will that piece be as time goes on, whether you grow tired of it or as the trend passes. So for example, a cheetah print blouse or maybe a headband or a hair clip or a scarf is going to be a lot more wearable then a cheetah print jumpsuit over time. Something like a cheetah print jumpsuit is much more trend specific and declarative of that trend versus a cheetah print blouse that you could mix in with jeans or trousers or with a skirt or stylize in different ways. This next one I know we are all guilty of. It is something that I really had to break out of my shopping habits and it's somewhere that I, Oh, I used to spend a lot of money doing this. Stop impulse shopping sales. Now, I used to be the biggest culprit of this. Anytime there was a sale going on, anytime things were like super cheap or the mall was having a big sale, or maybe it was Black Friday, I would just spend, 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 buy, 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 buy. And I wouldn't really necessarily be like, oh, this is something I love and be like ride or die for it. I would just buy it because it was a great price and how could I pass up on that deal? But something you need to think about is when you're just buying because something's cheap, you're not really saving money because you're buying something you wouldn't have maybe necessarily bought. And especially if it's something you don't love, we're gonna go back to that same thing of having a closet full of nothing to wear. There have been so many times where I bought stuff on sale because it was a cheap price and then it's sitting in my closet months later with the tags still on them. Now that was past Jess. I used to be really bad with that. I am so much better. I rarely impulse shop sales. Like when I really want something, I will either keep an eye on it or really think about it for a long time. One for the sake of like just not spending money impulsively, but then also for like the more sustainability aspect of it, of just like consumers and buy, 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 buy. Like now I really take time to consider when I am buying a piece, I think on it for Sometimes I think on it for a week or two and there have been times where I've thought on something for like months and I'm like, do I really want this? Will I wear it? And especially if it is a, a little bit more trend specific, I will wait maybe, I don't know, a month or two just to see like, oh, is this even still like in style? And if it is, if it's something I really like or really can't wait to wear, then I will buy it then. But that is something that's really kept me from impulse shopping is to just wait and really just see, hey, will this even be in style? Is this something I actually love? And then my other good tip for this, and this is not sponsored, is to use honey. I. I love honey. Honey is like the best thing ever. So if you decide to buy stuff online that you've had your eye on for a while, you've thought about it, yes, you really want it, you like it. Honey is like this little Chrome extension that always just finds like whatever the best coupon is and it like scans it and then it applies the coupon. So then you always save money. Like I always use it when I'm online shopping because chances are you save money. Like even when I bought the Harry Styles Fine Line album, I saved I think like 20% and I didn't even know Harry Styles website had Honey, like I didn't even know there were coupons, but it found me a coupon and I saved 
percent which was pretty amazing so would recommend always using the coupon thing also similarly there is another chrome extension and i think it's called shop tagger and you can actually uh mark which things you want to keep an eye on like let's say it's an expensive coat from a website and you want to wait till it goes on sale shop tagger will actually track when it's going to go on sale and it sends you an alert like hey it's on sale so if there's something you really want but it's expensive or you don't want to buy it yet or you want to wait till it goes on sale shop tagger can actually send you an email so you can like buy it at its best price so those are like my two recommendations for that if you want to shop sales or shop things at a cheaper price Another style mistake that you are probably making is buying size specific. Now, when I say size specific, I mean buying only what's in your size versus buying what actually fits and feels most comfortable. So, oh, there's a couple things with this. Number one is store to store things fit so differently. Sizing is so vast and varied in the fashion industry when, I mean, it shouldn't be, it should just be like measurements, but you know, store to store, they make up their own rules and it's like, this is a size this and this is a size this. And every store kind of has different sizing and nothing is going to fit the same. So you really just have to try before you buy. Like that's one of my biggest tips is to always try things on before you buy them because you always wanna make sure that Whatever you're buying fits best, fits well. Just because you're a size four or six or eight or 10 or whatever size at one store doesn't mean you're going to be that same size at a different store. There was a time, I think like two or three years ago when I bought jeans or tried to buy jeans at H&M. I am usually a size four or six and at their store, I was like a size 10 or 12. Like I got my size and I could barely fit one leg in and I was like, what the heck? Their sizing was so different than anything I had ever tried. So when you're buying stuff, don't feel so limited to the one size number that you typically are. Buy whatever fits and feels most comfortable on you. Another thing is that if you're a size four or six in pants, I'm just using my examples. If you're a size four or six in pants, that doesn't necessarily, you're going to be the same in a top or a dress. Like I am pretty top heavy. I'm a 32E and sometimes I'm a medium and sometimes I'm even a large in certain things like tops or sports bras because you know, things fit differently. Don't worry about any of the numbers of that crap. It doesn't matter. Just figure out like what you feel beautiful and strong and confident in and go with that. Now this one I think is a huge, huge style mistake that so many people are making. You don't edit your closet enough. You don't go through and get rid of the pieces that clutter up your closet. So we talked earlier about impulse buying things and you know, buying stuff on sale that you don't actually like and you don't actually wear and they still have tags on them not clearing that stuff out of your closet. And also I wanna make a note when I say get rid of, I don't mean throw away, don't throw away your clothes, either donate them, resell them, uh, give them to a women's shelter or a foster care center, but editing your closet, going through it and curating it to be full of stuff you love instead of just full of stuff. Hanging onto clothes that don't fit right, that you don't wear anymore, that you don't like, that still have the tags on them is so just not great because it clutters up your wardrobe and it hides all the stuff that you do love to wear, that you do like, and it makes you feel like you have a closet full of stuff but nothing to wear. So something you should be doing is constantly going through your wardrobe and figuring out what pieces you don't like, what pieces you don't wear and setting those aside. So my routine to editing, curating, and just decluttering my wardrobe is once a month I go through and I look at all the pieces that I haven't been wearing and I think about why. Is it because they don't fit right? Is it because I don't like them? Is it season or occasion specific? And I just go through everything and I just make mental notes and take out the pieces that I actually just don't like anymore, that don't fit well anymore. I set those aside and then I sort them by like, oh, these are for reselling on Poshmark. These are for donating. And then these are for like giving to friends or family or whatever. And I always am just taking out the pieces that I don't like because I think just curating your wardrobe and just figuring out what you actually do like makes it so much easier for when you you go to get ready in the morning, you can just walk up to your closet and see all of the things that you are so excited to wear. And it makes getting ready and putting together an outfit so much more fun and significantly more easy. Declutter your closet, curate it, edit it, and make it less cluttery and instead just full of stuff that you're like, ah, I can't wait to wear this. 
and the last style mistake that you might be making is ignoring the basics. Now I talk about the basics and basics of a wardrobe in almost every single one of my style videos, but I just want you guys to really understand the importance of how far basics go, how much more versatile your wardrobe becomes when you have those good foundational building blocks of basics. So if oftentimes you look at your closet and you feel like nothing matches, nothing goes, you have all of these really cool pieces, but they don't really like match well together. They don't mix and you don't know how to pair stuff together. Chances are it's because you don't have enough basics. So for example, let's say you have a really cool funky skirt that you are so excited to wear, but none of the tops in your wardrobe really pair well or work with that skirt. But if you had a basic white t-shirt, boom, you'd have an outfit. If you had a black cami, boom, you'd have an outfit. If you had a black bodysuit and then tossed a denim jacket over top, chances are you'd have another outfit. Having these basics makes putting together an outfit so much easier. And if you are missing pieces in your wardrobe essentials, your basics, then definitely take the time. And it doesn't have to be all at once. You can do it over time, but just slowly over time, fill in those gaps to where you have a good variety of versatile, high quality basics. And that is it for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you guys got some good tips and tricks that you can actually apply to your life and use daily, especially when it comes to decluttering and making your wardrobe a place of you know things you love instead of things that you just have and then also the best kind of bonus i hope you guys learned some good tips on how to save money when it comes to shopping and just ultimately curating your wardrobe now let's move into our quote of the day segment and today's quote is one that i think is just a really great reminder to keep in the back of your head so today's quote says make happiness a priority and be gentle with yourself in the process i love that because i thank all of us including myself majorly myself, we're all too hard on ourselves. We hold ourselves to these unrealistic expectations in our heads. And sometimes, most times, we can't meet those expectations. So I really want you guys to keep in your head that you know, sometimes life gets in the way, sometimes things happen, but regardless, your personal happiness should be number one. And you also have to just be kind to yourself in the process. You cannot be hard on yourself all the time. You have to you have to love yourself, gotta be nice. That's something that all of you guys, I'm challenging you guys this week, as well as myself, I'm gonna challenge myself to be kinder to myself, to give myself a little bit of grace. That's, that's our challenge, our mutual challenge. We'll work on it together, you know, me and you, you and me. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I love you guys lots and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.